and here we have our reference planes here in the center or our base coordinate system. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle by center. Start drawing out here. Let's uh, make it 300 by 100. Now, what you see here is that we have uh, what we call a region, this enclosed area within the profile. If I click on that region, I can start to extrude without actually having to go into a command. Automatically puts me in extrude. If I hit the shift, I can go in equal directions. I'm going to hit shift again, go in single direction. Okay. The other thing I could do is I could drag that origin to an edge. What that does is allow me actually to go into a revolved extrusion again without having to actually pick a command. Our case, we do want to just do a, an extrude. And the thing I want you to pay attention to is the dimensions that are on the sketch. When I click to accept that, you can see that those dimensions migrated from the sketch directly onto the 3D model. Because in synchronous technology, we actually are going to edit the 3D model directly. We're never going to go back to that sketch to make the change. So in other words, if I click on that dimension, I want to make it 500. You can see I modify that dimension directly on the model itself. So there I've made some modifications. The other way you can make modifications is by clicking and dragging on a face. So if I click on a face, the thing I want you to pay attention to is up in the right corner, this design intent panel. This is monitoring our model, looking for specific geometric conditions, and it will maintain those geometric conditions for me automatically. Notice as I start to drag, you're going to see that list drop to only symmetry. That's the only thing it found within the model that it needs to maintain for me. If I decide I don't want that, I could just click S or uncheck it in the design intent panel, and now it's only going to move the face that I selected. In my case, I want to keep it symmetric, so I'm going to click S again, and it's going to maintain that symmetry, and I could key in uh, in a value here. I only want to move 50 millimeters. Now, just to prove to you that we don't actually go back to the sketch, if I look at the sketch, you can see it's still the original size of the box. As a matter of fact, I can even delete that sketch because we don't need it. It's not part of the solid. So you can't do that in other CAD systems because it would have just destroyed the model because they rely on that sketch. Let's go ahead and continue modeling. I'm going to draw a line actually vertically across this face. Uh, notice what that did. It broke this into more regions. I click on a region, start to drag. If I pull it down, it creates a cut. If I pull it up, creates an extrude. Now if you think about how I modeled this, I modeled this from the side view here, uh, so from a, or from the front view, X, Z plane there, drew a profile and extruded it along Y. The next extrusion was straight up along the Z axis. But then what if later I decide that this vertical section needs to be rotated 15 degrees? Well because the way in which I modeled it, if this was an ordered model, uh, I can't extrude at 15 degrees. I would have to actually cut it off, draw it from the side profile at 15 degrees, and then extrude along the y-axis. Uh, so again, you have to think about how you're going to build the model, uh, how you're going to edit the model when you're building it. With synchronous technology, we don't care how you built the model. You simply select what you want to change, take your steering wheel, which is our editing tool, put it on the corner you wish to rotate about, click on the torus on the steering wheel, and start rotating it very quickly and easily. With that same steering wheel tool, I could pick the vertical arrow and drag it up. I could move the steering wheel down here on an edge to align with that edge, so I can move it along this axis. You simply select what you want to change and make the edits without any consideration on how the model was built.